morning, good morning, Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type, type in hashtag replay so I'll know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so I will know that you are watching. Good morning, good morning, Faith. Good morning, Marita. Good morning, everyone. Let me get logged in so I can go ahead and begin to get us shared out all right here we go great morning everyone good morning good morning evangelist rosa good morning peggy white if you all can <clears throat> say good morning as you're tuning in and go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast i will share this into uh the weight loss and lifestyle changes community if someone can share this um peggy if you can share this and we write the word for me that would be amazing Good morning, everyone. So good to see you all. So good to see you all. Go ahead and type in the comments, God did it again. God did it again. Amen. It is a great day. Okay, here we go. It is a great day to be alive. Someone type that in the comments. It's a great day to be alive. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for sharing. After you have shared, go ahead and type in hashtag shared in the comments. If you have not already, make sure you've grabbed your anointing oil and that you have anointed your hands. And go ahead. Thank you, Peggy. And go ahead and type in the comments. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. <laughs> These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Good morning. Yes, it's a great day to be alive. Make sure that you've grabbed your water, um, your Bible your journals your pens get everything it is that you need before we get started good morning marion so good to see you all so good to see you yes god got you up i'm so glad you're here good morning yolanda i am so happy to see you all um so you know <clears throat> the fourth of july sorry it's the fourth of july weekend so today is thursday is that right is today thursday if today is Thursday, um, I will not be on on Friday. I need to make sure I let you all know that I will not be on on Friday. We will not be here, so I need to make sure that it is today, because if so, we need to start throwing some stuff at a suitcase. All right, <laughs> so um, today, uh, yes, today is Thursday. So I will not be on tomorrow. We will not be on tomorrow, so I needed to make sure that I remember to, um, to share that. So, all right, after you've shared, go ahead and share it. It is a fine time to evangelize. Let me go ahead and make sure I turn off all of these, uh, all of this. I'm hearing a bunch of stuff over here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, good morning. All right, so what are we doing? We've anointed our hands. Make sure you've done that. Go ahead and type in the comments. My hands are blessed. After you've shared the broadcast, come back and type in hashtag share. It is a great way to evangelize. Keeps it so simple, makes it so easy just by sharing this broadcast. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, I needed to make sure. Burrito, I'm so glad you, you uh, I'm so glad you messaged me. I had not even thought ahead that far yet. So I got some work to do today. <laughs> it's going to be a busy day. All right. Yes. Thanking God for life and breath. Um, what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? Um, I went to bed somewhere in the 11 o'clock hour, way later than I usually like to, and got up at 3.15. Somebody type in the comments. I got up. <laughs> Somebody type that in the comments. I got up. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. Um, we're going to jump in. If you're on this broadcast live or if you're catching the replay, that means that you are on the wake up list and that's not a small thing. So we're just going to take a moment to thank the Father. You can go ahead and type at least one thing in the comments um, that you're thankful for or just type in the comments. Y'all just type that in. Someone type that in for me. God, I appreciate you. Let's just let him know that we appreciate him. Lisa says, thank you for life, health, and strength. Amen. I got up. Amen. Listen, that's not a small thing. It is not a small thing. I'm so thankful and so grateful. So, Father, we love you. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. 
you are good in every way there is to be good and we just want to say thank you someone type that in the comments we just want to say thank you we thank you for being our protector. We thank you for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you have protected us from. And yes, Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for everything. We thank you for our families. We just thank you for everything, Father. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with the minds who want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with the minds who want to spend time in your word. We say thank you. Someone type that in the comments for me. Somebody say thank you. All right. So listen, um, say thank you. All right. I'm trying to see something. Let me start this first, and then I'm trying to see something. Listen, I'm talking to you all, having a whole full-on conversation with God in my head. I'm trying to see something. Um, I might need to change something. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Someone type in Philippians 4.13 for me in the comments. Philippians 4.13. Someone type that in the comments. We're going to go ahead and start uh, with our um, devotional. Type in Philippians 4.13 for me. All right, and we all know this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Someone type that in the comments for me, Philippians 4.13. So I'm going to read our devotional for today, and then I'm going to jump into uh, what I want to share. All right, and I need you all to type this in the comments. Excuses limit me. Excuses limit me. Someone type that in the comments for me. Excuses limit me. Excuses limit me. Excuses limit me. All right. When you make excuses regarding why you cannot do something that my word says you can, you are not disqualifying and limiting yourself, but you are disqualifying and limited me. So excuses limit me. Who are we talking about? Excuses limit God excuses limit God and not only limits what we can do it also limits what he can do all right when you make excuses which contradict my word you are saying I am him the father not big enough to work through you I am so large that the entire world cannot contain me what a great reminder. He is so large, so big that the entire world cannot contain him. An excuse is a lot. Listen, I need y'all to lean in and listen to this because this is going to help somebody. All right. I posted yesterday that we are going to finish 2020 strong. It doesn't matter what happened in the first six months of 2020. Be encouraged. You are going to finish 2020 small, 2020 strong, and we're dropping all excuses. What do we say here? Waking early for his glory. Hashtag no excuses, right? No excuses. We will make no excuses no excuses <clears throat> so listen to this an excuse is a lie that you have chosen to believe instead of my word because the word of god tells us we can do all things through christ who strengthens us right all things so if we're telling ourselves that we can't do something we are not only limiting ourselves but we're also limiting god and we're choosing to believe a lie instead of believing God's word. And I also say this, that excuses are well-planned lies. All right, excuses are nothing more than well-planned lies. Good morning, Julius. Good morning, Katrina. Good morning to all of you that just tuned in. Go ahead and share the broadcast. And if you all have not shared it, go ahead and share it and type in hashtag share. This is going to help somebody. All right, I said, the father said, I said that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I cannot see any room for excuses in that truth. Somebody say, there's no room. There's no room because it says all. Somebody type in hashtag all for me. All things. There's no room. There's no room for excuses. <clears throat> all right. Excuse me, hold the line. <coughs> Sorry about that. Bondages and lifelong limitations start 
with excuses. I need you all to say there are no time. There's no time for excuses. Yes, excuses are well-planned lies. And I remember um, Rabbit Trail one day, it was a few years ago that um, I was supposed to do something and I kept coming up with all of these excuses, all of these excuses. And I thought, these are nothing but a bunch of lies. And I'm sitting here planning all this out. And I remember saying excuses are well-planned lies. And that's when I said no more time for excuses. And there are times when I even find myself beginning to make excuses and I have to remind my own self, hold on, wait a minute, no excuses. What does the word say? All right, so bondages and lifelong limitations start with excuses. Once you choose, it's a choice, okay? Once you choose to start making excuses, it is hard to get out of that habit. And listen, if you are anything like me, where I used to make nothing but excuses. And I think that's why right now I have such a low tolerance for excuses. And it's so important for me to help people to see when they're making excuses. You know, and a lot of times people don't want to know the truth and they get offended. And I'm like, I'm just trying to help you to see that you are making excuses right now. All right. So bondages and lifelong limitations, they start with excuses. Once you start making excuses, it's hard to get out of that habit. Starting today choose not to allow limitations in your life and that is what we're doing when we make excuses all right so this is going to help all of us you know trying to finish the rest of this year strong it doesn't matter what happened you know because we're coming up with all kind of excuses well this happened that happened well this is going on well that's going on and we're coming up with all of these excuses on why we can't do what it is that we're supposed to do and why we can't finish strong, why we need to throw all the 2020 away. Listen, we're going to finish strong, all right? And we're going to choose today. It says, once you choose to start making excuses, it's hard to get out of the habit. Starting today, choose not to allow limitations into your life. Ask me to reveal where you are disqualifying and limiting yourself, thus limiting my kingdom being manifest through you. All right, so I need you all to say again, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things, not some things. The word says all things. So um, that is something that you can do after this broadcast. Ask, you know, sit before the Lord and get before him and ask him, where am I limiting you? You know, where am I limiting myself? Where am I limiting you? Where am I limiting myself? Because when we are limiting ourselves, we are ultimately limiting God. All right, so. What a, what is, I think is Romans 3, 4, it says, let God's word be true and every man be a liar. And sometimes I have to remind myself, sometimes Keisha, you are that liar, you know, because we sit and tell ourselves we can't do things. Let God be true. What is his word says? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let every man be a liar. So if it's you telling you that you can't do it, it doesn't matter who it is that's telling you that you can't do something. Let God be true. And let every man be a liar. And I think that's Romans 3, 4, if I have that right. All right, so excuses limit who? Excuses not only limit us, but it also limits God. So I thought this uh, devotional was such a timely word. I would say such a timely word. So timely for right now. Um, so yes, and I also, let me go ahead and read this. Luke 14, verses 18 through 24. Luke 14, verses 18 through 24, and it says, But they all began making excuses. One said he had just bought a field and wanted to expect it and asked to be excused. Another said he had just bought five pair of oxen and wanted to try them out. Well then, said his master, go out into the country lanes and out behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I invited first will get even the smallest taste of what I prepare for them. Why? Because they came in making excuses. Somebody type in hashtag no excuses, no excuses, no excuses. And um, that's Luke 14, verses 18 through 24. And that, um, that's the, uh, the, the Living Bible translation. All right, so listen, that blessed me. This blessed me. So I wanted to share that. All right, so today we are talking about how to deal with depression. So we talked about faith and fear and the different things that come along with that, like anxiety, worry, stress, and we can go ahead and add depression to that list. And a lot of people 
are dealing with this right now, you know, because of this pandemic and everything, you know, all of the things that have been happening, that have been going on, a lot of people are dealing with stress, a lot of people are dealing with worry and fear and anxiety. Um, so we're going to talk about this today. And I was trying to see um, how I was going to make this broadcast not be too long and if it needed to be a part two. But um, remember, tomorrow is Friday. And I will not be on because we will not be here. We will um, be celebrating the 4th of July weekend. So I'm going to try to get all of this done. And if I need to do a part two, I'll figure out how when I'm going to do that. All right. So I want to somebody type in 1 Kings 19 verses 1 through 9. Someone type that in for me. Um, 1 Kings 19 verses 1 through 9. 1 Kings 19 verses 1 through 9. All right, and I'll go ahead and read it. I may, ooh, I feel like I should have somebody come on alive and read it for me. <laughs> 1 Kings 19 verses 1 through live. We, 1 through 9. We may try that next week to see if somebody wants to come on and read the scripture references for me. All right, King Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how Elijah had killed all the prophets with a sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, may the gods punish me terribly if by this time tomorrow I don't kill you just as you killed those prophets. When Elijah heard this, he was afraid and ran for his life, taking his servant with him. When they came to Beersheba in Judah, Elijah left his servant there. Then Elijah walked for a whole day into the desert. He sat down under a bush and asked to die. Listen, I love reading the word because I don't think there's anybody in this Bible that cannot relate to something that we have gone through. Has anyone else, and listen, I could be transparent, has anyone else felt like or been in a place, been in such a dark place where they felt like, you know what, what on earth am I even here for? I have been there. So again, he sat down under a bush and asked to die. I have had enough, Lord. Has anyone else has to have, have any, anyone else ever said this? I don't know if you have. Raise your hand. I have had enough, Lord. I have had enough, Lord. He prayed. Let me die. I am no better than than my ancestors. Then he lay under the tree and slept. And he slept. What is this telling us? That Elijah was depressed. He's like, I had enough. I am no better than my ancestors. And he just lay down under the tree and he slept. All right. So there are many people in the Bible that have um, struggled with or dealt with depression. So we're just talking about one of them, Elijah on today. That's right. All right. And so suddenly, somebody say suddenly, suddenly an angel came to him and touched him. Get up and eat. The angel said, Elijah saw near his head a loaf baked over coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank. Then he went back to sleep. Later, the Lord's angel came to him a second time. The angel touched him and said, get up and eat. If you don't, the journey will be too hard for you. So Elijah got up and ate and drank. The food made him strong enough to walk for 40 days and nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. Then Elijah went into the cave and stayed all night. Then Elijah went into the cave and stayed all night. Then the Lord spoke this word to him, Elijah, why are you here? All right, so I'm going to stop there. So that was um, 1 Kings 19, um, 1 through 9. All right, so we're going to talk about a few things. So this passage of scripture let us know that Elijah was depressed. All right, that he was depressed. And I have some notes here, and I want to try to get through all of this. Depression is one of the greatest problems today. And I remember doing a live several months ago um, for the first time, and I was so nervous doing that live, just kind of sharing my struggle with that over the years. And um, so let's talk about this today. All right, so many people suffer from this emotional illness. And um, I want to read this. There are different types of depression, and right? And not all is the same. Um, so num number one, there's major, there's six different classifications, right? Um, major depression, which is a profound and constant sense of hopelessness and despair. 
All right, and then there's chronic depression, loss of interest in daily activities where you feel hopeless, a lack of productivity, and you feel worthless, and you have thoughts of death and suicide. Yes, it is awful. All right, um, then there's bipolar depression, severe when you have severe highs and severe lows, severe lows, being happy, then sad, then angry. All right, then there's seasonal depression, which that's what it was in most cases for me. All right, so it occurs each year at the same time usually in the fall and winter months and i believe there are there there are more people than 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 we know that um suffer from that deal with that then there's psychotic depression where you have hallucinations where you're seeing and hearing things having delusions and then there's postpartum depression a mix of physical emotional and behavioral change after giving birth all right so all you know these all of these forms um are serious and most often time at times we have to seek professional help, right? And I know for me, like I shared in that video, I didn't want to ask for help. You know, it was easier for me to show up, have this big old smile on my face right now. It's a real smile. But I, you know, wore this mask and I didn't want anyone to know that I was suffering, you know? So therefore, what did I do? Most people do. You suffer in silence, right? Because you're afraid of being judged. Well, you're a Christian. You say you love the word. You spend time in the word. How can you be depressed? You know, you know the things that they say, just get over it. It's no big deal get some more sleep you know the things that people say because they don't know what to say right and so I'm here to say that it's okay to be saved it's okay to be anointed it's okay to love God and need help all right it's okay somebody type in the comments it's okay y'all are real quiet are y'all with me because I don't see the comments moving and I need to make sure I'm not frozen all right so it's okay I need you all to say it's okay it's okay Yes, you heard it too, so you get it. And I'm like, you don't understand, you know, so you just stop talking about it because people just don't understand. All right, so let's talk about Elijah and we're talking and, and fault his faulty thinking. All right, so Elijah was so depressed that he wanted to die. And listen, I think I even shared that story in that video where I was in such a deep, dark place and I saw no way out. And when you're in that place, that deep, dark place, that's the only thing you can think of, you know, it's, well, I might as well not be here. And then the enemy would say things like, you might as well just go ahead and do it because nobody will care. You know, no one will even miss you. No one will even notice. And I believed all of those lies. I even said things like, no one would even come to my funeral. No one would even care. You know, so the enemy tells you all of these lies, right? Hold the line. All right. And so. Our emotions are often affected by our thoughts. And so for me, I had to work on this right here. I had to work on this. And that's where the whole I'm minding my business came from, right? I'm minding my mind. I'm thinking about what it is that I'm thinking about. If my thoughts do not align up with the word of God, what do we say we're going to do? We're going to think a new thought, right? Because we know now that we don't have to think on every thought that pops in, uh, that pops in our head, right? And so um, we're minding our mouth right? We're, if the word we're saying does not align with the word of God, we're not going to say it and we're minding our emotions, right? So our thoughts have a lot to do with it. And for me, I realized that I could literally think myself into a depression and I could literally think myself out of a depression. So our minds and our thoughts have a lot to do with it. So Proverbs 23, 7, someone type that in. Proverbs, listen, yes, he is such a liar. And see, and that's why I said we cannot engage in conversation with the enemy, right? So we're sitting there thinking these thoughts, right? And literally, I would be having a whole full-on conversation with the enemy, repeating what he said. Nobody would care. Nobody would even notice. They won't even come to your funeral. N no one will even notice that you're gone. It's like, really? Come on. No one will notice that I'm gone. Nobody's going to come to my funeral. But the thing is, I believed it. I believed it. I believed it. I believed the lie. And so much so, I would repeat it. I believed it, you know? And so, Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. This broadcast, I already know it's going to be a few parts to this because I'm only in the first paragraph on my page. <laughs> All right. So for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. 
All right. And so um, what, what does my note say? Often our emotional state is caused by how we perceive and interpret life. So our thought life is very important. So that is why it's so important to spend time in the word. And if the thoughts that we're thinking does not align with the word of God, we need to make a decision to think a new thought. Somebody type in, I'm going to think a new thought. All right, I'm going to think a new thought. So um, in this story, in 1 Kings, Elijah was God's prophet for three years, all right, to the nation of Israel. And so I want you all to just read this. Read, read all of, um, start with 1 Kings. Listen, I'm about to tell you, just read all of 1 Kings. <laughs> read all of 1 Kings. Um... I'm going to come back and make a, make a note where I want you all to start and where I want you all to finish um, because it's all good. I had I had to sit and read all of it. All right. So um, what are we talking about? OK, so how did Elijah get depressed? I need you all to just read all of first Kings. Can you all do that? Type that in the comments for me. First Kings. Just read all the first Kings. Read all the first Kings. The weekend is coming up. If you can't sit and read it, at least listen to it on the uh, on the audio Bible. So how did Elijah get depressed? He was focused on four different mental games, games that we play. All right. And we all play these games when we get depressed. And I wish there was another way to say it. But you all know what I mean. We, we, we all do this. There are four mental games that we play. And first and foremost, we dwell on facts. In, and not our feelings. We need to dwell on facts and not our feelings. We need to dwell on facts and not our feelings, all right? And so um, what was the first mistake that Elijah made, all right? It's the same mistake that we make when we get depressed. We dwell on our feelings rather than the facts. And so I was dwelling on what it was that I was feeling rather than the facts. I felt like no one would even notice. I felt like no one would come to my funeral. I felt like no one even cared. What are the facts? People do care. People will notice. People will come to my funeral, right? Um, so we need to make sure that we dwell on facts and not our feelings. And so that's what the, that was the first mistake that he made. He dwelt on his feelings instead of the facts. So y'all type in a number one because that was his first mistake. All right. And so what was his second mistake? What was Elijah's second mistake? And again, just read, if you can't read all of 1 Kings, at least um, start with um, 1 Kings 18 and 1 Kings 19. So what was Elijah's second mistake? All right, he kept comparing himself to others. So what is the second mental game that we play? The comparison game. The comparison game. And that's a sure way to travel down that road. You know, it's just, listen, Y'all, this, this was a touchy one for me because it just took me right back to that place where I used to be. And I was just like, my God. And I just began to just really thank God because let me tell you, when I was in that dark place, I didn't see a way out. But I could sit here before you today and say, God is faithful. That's right. Assumptions are not your friend. God is so faithful. Let me tell you, God is faithful. But it took me digging in this word and spending time with him. Um, you know, all right. So his second error was that he was comparing himself to others. All right. And so what are some things that we do? We compare our weaknesses to other people's strengths. All right. We, we tend to compare our weaknesses to other people's strengths, not knowing that those people are also weak in areas where we may be strong. So I need you all to say today, I will not compare myself to others so that is a second mental game or a second game that we play the comparison game all right the comparison game and so another mistake that he made was that he blamed his self for the negative things that happened in his life that were not his fault so someone type in first kings 9 10 first kings 9 10 we stopped at um first kings we stopped at nine, but I want to read uh, 1 Kings 9, 10. It says, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. Okay, and so in other words, he says, I have worked hard all these years for your people, but they're still not close to you. And so um, he took on false blame. All right, so the, net, the other mistake that he made was that he took on false blame and we tend to do that 
all right we compare ourselves to others and we take on false blame all right we take we take on false blame so in in his time of depression elijah blamed himself for failing to change his people and he took it personally when we take false blame it causes depression to hashtag ask me how i know all right so the third mental game that we play is false blame i need you all to say that i will not take false blame listen is this helping you all i was trying to share this in a way that it made sense i was trying to share this in a way where we didn't get too deep at 4 30 in the morning and that this broadcast wasn't like really long because again this is another one of the topics that we can literally stay on a whole entire week right so false blame causes depression all right and so when we assume responsibility for other people's decisions we take on a burden that will depress us hashtag ask me how i do no somebody type in don't do it somebody type in don't do it all right and so another error that elijah made all right was that he would he um that he exaggerated the negative he exaggerated. That's right. Hashtag ask me how I know. Listen, I feel like I've been through so much in my life. <laughs> That's why there's just so much to talk about and so much to share and so much of hashtag ask me how I know, <laughs> you know, just so much of that. All right. So another um, error that Elijah made was that he exaggerated the negative. And so um, let me read First Kings 19.10 again. All right. First Kings 19.10, he said, I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me. All right. So what was he doing? He was having a little pity party. Was he really the only one left? Absolutely not. And the reason I kind of giggle when I read this is because that sounds like so many of us, you know, we do that. We exaggerate the negative. All right. And so the truth was not that all people were against him. It was only one person, Jezebel. Right. And so he exaggerated the negative and we do that. Everybody hates me. Everybody is against me. And so we have this great big pity party. Right. And then we get mad when our friends don't want to come to our pity party. So uh, exaggerating isn't in the net exaggerating the negative is a sure way that's another way to uh, send yourself into a depression and so as I was reading this and as I was um, you know just kind of studying and going through this I said wow um, a lot of what I a lot of my thinking a lot of my thinking what is what was causing me um, to be depressed yes negative magnified that's it all right so I need you all to type in the comments I will not exaggerate the negative I will not exaggerate the negative negative. and so what helped me was renewing my mind in God's Word and that is why it's so important for us to spend time in the Word that's why I'm so thankful that we are reading through the one-year Bible together because it's so important for us to make sure that we are spending time in the Word so we just kind of went through some of the mistakes that Elijah made that caused him to get to such a deep dark place where he where obviously it's clearly obviously that he felt there was no other way out but then to die you know and that is a lie somebody type in the comments the devil is a liar the devil is a liar him his mama daddy his whole entire family right they're all liars all right so don't exaggerate the negative negative. and second corinthians 10 5 says we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We can no longer sit and engage in conversation with the enemy by repeating his lies. Again, if the word does not align with the word of God, what are we going to do? We're going to take that thought captive and make it, not hope that it does, and make it. We're not going to hope that it does. We're going to make it obedient to Christ. All right. And so depression, what am I saying? It's a very big deal, right? But depression is oftentimes associated with believing lies. It is often associated with believing lies. And that is why it's so important for us to spend time in the Word.
for ourselves. Good morning to those of you that are just tuning in. Please go ahead and share the broadcast. I believe that this is going to bless you, so make sure that you um, catch the replay. Um, listen, is this helping you all? Is this too much? Am I going too fast? Is this helping anybody? Are y'all getting anything out of what I'm sharing? If you are, just type a yes in the comments so I'll know. All right. And so, again, depression is often associated with believing lies and what we think has a great impact on what we feel, what we think has a great impact on what we feel. And listen to this. All right. So, again, let me tell you about these thoughts. Right. Let me tell you about these thoughts. Let me just be real and be honest here. Uh, what's today? Wednesday. So yesterday was Tuesday. It was Monday on Monday. I was having a day. I don't even know how it started, where it began. But all I know, I ended up being, oh, my God, I can't do this. What is this? This, everything. I can't do any of this. Oh, my God. You know, I'm not the right person for this. Oh, my, I'm not good enough. I'm not really helping anybody, right? Um, and so all of this negative thinking caused me to almost say, you know what? I'm done. Find somebody else, God. You know, was I really going to quit? Probably not. But that's just where I was in my mind, right? And so... Um, I, I, something came up and I ended up kind of getting on the phone with my coach and she was like, okay, what's going on? So I'm telling her and she's listening and she's like, you know, she gave me a minute and she's like, hold on, this thinking right here, uh-uh, no, we're not going to do this. So, um, all that to say, I had to kind of just reel it back in, reel it back in. So I found myself repeating the lies of the enemy. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. You're not helping anybody. You're not making a difference. You're really not making an impact. Is that the truth? Is that the truth? No, it was what I was feeling. It wasn't facts. And so I found myself feeling a little depressed. I did not have a good day. Is this helping anybody? I don't know any other way to be than to be transparent. And sometimes I feel like I share too much. <laughs> So anyway, I was just there. So listen, you, that was you too? All right. Okay, good. I'm, I'm glad it wasn't just me. All right. Because sometimes I have to pause and be like, maybe, I'm, maybe it's just me. And so I had to sit and I ended up playing some worship music. Um, and then I ended up texting her a few hours later. I'm like, I'm back. I'm in my right mind again. <laughs> And she's like, you're always in your right mind. You just needed a little help getting that, you know, your thoughts back on track, right? And uh, I'm like, I'm in my right mind. I'm good to go now. I'm good. I'm good to go, you know? And so don't let Facebook fool you, you know? And, you know, you, get, you see people and they show up and they do, but you never know what's going on behind the scenes. But one thing I learned to do is push through no matter what. You know, I've learned to just push through no matter what. I, and that's just what I've learned to do, you know? And Facebook for me... It's really strong accountability because Facebook caused me to get up out of bed on days when I didn't want to go get out of bed. And I'm talking years of this, right? I'm going back as far as eight years because I've been showing up on Facebook probably eight years now. Um, you know, Facebook caused me to get up out of the bed when I didn't want to. There were days where I would have all the blinds closed, blankets over the windows, like I'm not getting up. And once I started showing up on Facebook, it started eight years ago, rabbit trail. I said, let me get up and go for a walk. And so I got up and I went for a walk. And I remember posting on Facebook, I walked 15 minutes. And, you know, nothing. <laughs> And I got up the next day, I walked 15 minutes, you know, I ate a salad, I'm feeling good. You know, so how we take care of ourselves or don't take care of ourselves affects how we feel as well. And so I just kept showing up, kept showing up. And then there would be a day where I would sleep all day. And then the next day, you know, somebody would message me, where are you? You know, so Facebook is really strong accountability, um, really strong accountability. When I say really strong accountability, for me, it was really strong accountability really strong. So this is eight years of this, right? So someone new to my page might think, oh my gosh, you know, how is she getting up at 4 30? And they don't under they don't know the journey. This has been eight years long. All right. Eight years. Somebody type in a number eight. Eight years long. I didn't just wake up yesterday showing up on Facebook, right? It's been eight years long. And it started just by me. Listen, trying to get my own self together, trying to get my own life together. So and when I say I love Facebook, I love you all, I love Facebook. And I know this might seem really dramatic, but I tell people all the time, Facebook saved my life. And I can li I literally believe that. 
I literally believe that because it got me up and it made me show up even when I didn't want to. It, it made me show up even when I didn't want to because then people started looking for me, right? Then I could not show up because people were looking for me. So I had to show up. So anyway, what were we talking about? That was, that was a rabbit trail. All right. Where was I? Where was I? We talked about not exaggerating the negative. So listen, y'all. I was in a dark place and I realized, do you have stock in Facebook? No, but I sure need to, right? I sure should. Are you selling something or not? Heaven is free. Oh, I guess I think is that Okay, I, all right, let me, let me get back on track. Don't exaggerate the negative, and we need to renew our mind in God's word. Again, so 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, all right? So depression is often associated with believing God, believing lies, all right? So hiding God's work in our hearts can radically change our lives Hashtag ask me how I know getting in the word and hiding his word in our heart can drastically change our lives. And so listen, hear me when I say this. I remember going to the doctor. They were giving me all different kinds of medication, right? I didn't like how the medication was making me feel. And I'm not telling anyone that's listening to me that may be on medication. I'm not telling you to stop. But I remember saying I can't do this. I, don't, I do not like how this makes me feel. I felt like a zombie, felt like I was sleeping all day. It, I, just, I just said, there's got to be another way. And so I remember praying, asking God, like, help me. There's got to be another way. And I got in his word. This word right here was my medicine. This word right here was my medicine. And I realized for me, it was my thinking. It was my stinking thinking. And that, and I remember that day uh, when I was talking to my coach, it was like the, my, I realized that, you know, my stinking thinking, even now I keep hitting a wall and it's holding me back. All right. And so we have to get rid of this stinking thinking. And how do we do that? By digging in the word. All right. And so depression is not a part of God's plan for our lives. What time is it? Depression is not a part of God's plan for our lives. It's not. If this is helping you, share the broadcast. All right. So what are some things that we need to do? Number one, we need to dwell on facts and not our feelings. We need to dwell on facts and not our feelings. Number two, we need to stop the comparison game. We need to stop the comparison game. Number three, we do not take false blame. We will not do it. And number four, we will not exaggerate the negative. We will not exaggerate the negative. And we can find the remedy for depression right here in God's word. We can find it right here in God's word. Okay, I, I see that. Okay, I, I, I see that. I was wondering um, what that was. Yes, Melinda, I don't know how to take care of that, but I'll figure that out for the next time this happens. Stay focused, all right? Stay focused. All right, stay focused. So write this down or someone type this in the comments. These are some verses on, um, verses on depression I want you to write down. Deuteronomy 31.8. Deuteronomy 31.8. Deuteronomy 31 8. Let me see if I can figure this out. Boom! I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured it out. Deuteronomy 31 8. Deuteronomy 31 8. First time I had to do that uh, for Deuteronomy 31 8. Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8. Um, Philippians 4 13. Someone type that in. And John 16.33. John 16.33. And John 16.33 16, says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Somebody say, take heart. Somebody say, but take heart. He says, I have overcome the world. All right? And so... God's word is the remedy, all right? So I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. I'm not saying don't take your medication. But I know for me personally, turn into God's word. And even if you do do all those things, listen, it's okay to go to the doctor. It's okay to take medication if, if you need it. But you, we need to still renew our minds. 
it's okay, Jay. It, we need to still renew our minds. All right. So I need you to say, I will reach for the word and speak it over my life. I will reach for the word and speak it over my life. So I typed something up for you all, but it's in, in it's two pages. I won't read it, but I'm going to share it in the comments. All right. And it's 10 days of speaking the word. And so for the next 10 days, all right, y'all are going to print this out or download it and save it over your phone for the next 10 days. You're going to speak the you're going to speak these uh, declarations over your life. All right. And so I'm going to share this in the comments for you all for the sake of time. I won't read it. But let me go into our declarations. I pray I said something to help somebody, even if it's just one person, something today. All right. So I declare that as Christ is in me, so are my thoughts in his thoughts. I declare that as Christ is in me, so are my thoughts in his thoughts. All right. I decree and declare that my thoughts align with the thoughts of Christ. I decree. That's right. Y'all type that in. I will reach for the word. That's right. I decree and declare that my thoughts align with the thoughts of Christ. I decree and declare that the cloud of depression is shifting away from me. Hashtag waking early from his group for his glory. I decree and declare that the cloud of depression is shifting away from everyone that's on this blog broadcast right now that may be dealing with that. I decree and declare that the cloud of depression is shifting away from you. I declare that I will wait on the Lord who renews my strength. Hashtag waking early for his glory. I declare that I will wait on the Lord who renews my strength. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Okay, so what are some things that we will begin to do? Dwell on facts and not our feelings. We're going to stop the comparison game. We're not going to take false blame. And we will not exaggerate the negative. And we saw that those are all, those are four things that we pulled out from reading um, First Kings. 19 really and part of first Kings 18 that Elijah did which helped to um, Send him into that depression. We won't have any more pity parties We will no longer sit and engage in conversation with the enemy. We're going to cast down every vain imagination Yes, if the, what we're thinking does not align with the Word of God We're going to think a new thought and what is it in Philippians say we're going to think on things that are pure that are lovely that are true that are of good report and the list goes on. It's like three more things. And if it's not those things, we're going to do what? Think a new thought. We're going to frisk every thought at the door. All right. And just because that thought, what do we say? It comes knocking. Does not mean we need to open up the door and let it in. All right. If somebody tried to come in and, you know, just come in our house and rob us, we're not just going to open up the door and we're not going to allow all these crazy negative thoughts into the doorway of our minds. We're not going to do it, right? Amen. All right, so that's it. Excellent word. Thank you for being transparent. Oh, you're welcome. All right, y'all. So, listen, so that's it. That's all that I have to share about this, all right? So, with that being said, be reminded that God wants to bring emotional healing to your life. Hashtag ask me how I know. God wants to bring emotional healing to your life. So, let him do it. Let him do it. So, Father, I thank you for every single person that is on this broadcast right now. And I just want to say I release the peace of God and the strength of God over you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, it's 4 5 18. And we're going to go ahead and listen to the one-year Bible. This broadcast was longer than it, I intended for it to be, but I wanted to make sure I shared everything. So, if you're new to the broadcast, welcome. We're about to move into the second half of the broadcast. Someone type in 20 minutes. So if you can hang around for 20 more minutes for us to listen to the One Year Bible together, that's great. If not, go ahead and share your takeaway or something that stood out to you or something that you will do differently because of what you heard before you run. All right. So let me go ahead and get this pulled up on my phone. And I am going to stay another 20 minutes so we can listen to this together. All right. Can we all listen to it on our own? Absolutely. But it's better together, right? We're better together. <laughs> We're better together. So um, remember, um, I will not be live tomorrow. All right. So you all 
enjoy your 4th of July weekend. You're new. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I will not be live tomorrow. Somebody type that in the comments. She will not be live tomorrow. Um, I won't be live tomorrow. So I'll see y'all on Monday. All right. Where's my phone? I know. Hold the line. Here we go. So you all have a wonderful, wonderful holiday weekend. We are, and I'm excited. It's going to be a nice, another little break. All right. Someone type in the comments for me, audio.oneyearbibleonline.com, because I know someone will want to know where we're listening to this. So it's audio.oneyearbibleonline.com. And I'm going to share um, these 10 days of speaking a word. Are we back? Second Kings, chapter 20, verse 1, and we'll Are go we to chapter 22, verse 2. Verse 6 suggests that this event took place while Jerusalem was under siege by Assyria. It looks like we were frozen. It was frozen. bad enough that frozen? Judah was in danger, but the king was about to die. Okay, good. Sometimes it seems that troubles come in packs. Have you noticed that? Death is the last enemy we face, and only God can give us victory over death. Hezekiah was delivered because he prayed and used the means God provided for healing. Believing prayer right. can move Don't God to even to water. alter things in his universe just to meet our needs. He is a loving father. Hezekiah escaped the lion but succumbed to the serpent. Hey, Don. He let the enemy know his secrets. Again, it was pride. He speaks in this passage of my house my treasures my days his great victory over assyria go ahead and share this so others can listen as to he it entertained us. the babylonians he mortgaged his people's future by what he did and was thankful the defeat would not come in his own day yes you see oh, my friend your decisions you today will affect others tomorrow so make the right decisions wicked king ahaz as we move on into chapter 21 uh, we see that he fathered godly Hezekiah, and Hezekiah fathered evil King Manasseh, whom the Lord allowed to reign for 55 years. King Manasseh was the father of the godly King Josiah. Manasseh began his reign doing yes. evil, Walk. but at the end of his you life, can get some he steps repented. In if you're not Josiah sought notes. the Lord early in his life, but closed his life disobeying God. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the Old Testament. Okay. Is the volume okay? July 2nd, 2 Kings 20, verse 1, through chapter oh 22, God. verse 2. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always tried to be faithful to you and do what is pleasing in your sight. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. But before Isaiah had left the middle courtyard, the B12 this message drops. came to him from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I oh, will okay. heal you. Then three days from now, you will get out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life, mm -hmm. and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. I will do this to defend my honor and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah's servants, make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil. They did this and Hezekiah recovered. Meanwhile, Hezekiah had said to Isaiah, What sign will the Lord give to prove that he will heal me, and that I will go to the temple of the Lord three days from now? Isaiah replied, This is the sign that the Lord will give you to prove he will do as he promised. Would you like the shadow on the sundial to go forward ten steps or backward ten steps? The shadow always moves forward, Hezekiah replied. Make it go backward instead. So Isaiah asked the Lord to do this, and he caused the shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. Soon after this, 
Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick. Hezekiah welcomed the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and Amen, showed them Dana. all his other treasures, everything. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked him, What did those men want? Where were they from? Hezekiah replied, They came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? Isaiah asked. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I owned, all my treasures. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to this message from the Lord. The time is coming when everything you have, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your own descendants will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good. But the king was thinking, at least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. The rest of the events in Hezekiah's reign, including the extent of his power and how he built a pool and dug a tunnel to bring water into the city, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Hezekiah died, his son Manasseh became the next king. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. His mother was Hephzibah. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, imitating the detestable practices of the pagan nations whom the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He rebuilt the pagan shrines his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He constructed altars for Baal and set up an Asherah pole, just as King Ahab of Israel had done. He also bowed before all the forces of heaven and worshipped them. He even built pagan altars in the temple of the Lord, the place where the Lord had said his name should be honored. He built these altars for all the forces of heaven in both courtyards of the Lord's temple. Manasseh even sacrificed his own son in the fire. He practiced sorcery and divination, and he consulted with mediums and psychics. He did much that was evil in the Lord's sight, arousing his anger. Manasseh even took an Asherah pole he had made and set it up in the temple, the very place where the Lord had told David and his son Solomon, My name will be honored here forever in this temple and in Jerusalem, the city I have chosen from among all the other tribes of Israel. If the Israelites will obey my commands, the whole law that was given through my servant Moses, I will not send them into exile from this land that I gave their ancestors, but the people refused to listen, and Manasseh led them to do even more evil than the pagan nations whom the Lord had destroyed when the Israelites entered the land. Then the Lord said through his servants, the prophets, King Manasseh of Judah has done many detestable things. He is even more wicked than the Amorites who lived in this land before Israel. He has led the people of Judah into idolatry. So this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I will bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah that the ears of those who hear about it will tingle with horror. I will judge Jerusalem by the same standard I used for Samaria and by the same measure I used for the family of Ahab. I will wipe away the people of Jerusalem as one wipes a dish and turns it upside down. Then I will reject even those few of my people who are left, and I will hand them over as plunder for their enemies. For they have done great evil in my sight, and have angered me ever since their ancestors came out of Egypt. Manasseh also murdered many innocent people, until Jerusalem was filled from one end to the other with innocent blood. This was in addition to the sin that he caused the people of Judah to commit, leading them to do evil in the Lord's sight. The rest of the events in Manasseh's reign and all his deeds, including the sins he committed, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Manasseh died, he was buried in the palace garden 
the Garden of Uzzah. Then his son, Amon, became the next king. Amon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem two years. His mother was Meshulameth, the daughter of Heruz from Jotbah. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his father Manasseh had done. He followed the example of his father, worshipping the same idols that his father had worshipped. He abandoned the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and he refused to follow the Lord's ways. Then Amon's own servants plotted against him and assassinated him in his palace. But the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Amon, and they made his son Josiah the next king. The rest of the events in Amon's reign and all his deeds are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He was buried in his tomb in the Garden of Uzzah. Then his son Josiah became the next king. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother was Jedida, the daughter of Adiah from Bozgath. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his ancestor David. He did not turn aside from doing what was right. Mm, that's good. July 2nd. I don't like the texture of gummies. And now as we turn our attention to the New Testament, today we'll be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 21. We'll learn about the traveler. This farewell journey brought both joy and sorrow to Paul. But, you know, life is like that, isn't it? He knew what lay ahead of him, but kept going. Years before, the Lord had told him to get out of Jerusalem. Was he wrong in going back? We'll learn about the peacemaker. Paul moved from the will of the Lord be done to do what we tell you. So anxious was Paul to bring unity to the Jews and Gentiles in the church that he agreed to the plan. Was he following wisdom from above or earthly wisdom? That's been a debate down through the years. You see, not every decision we make turns out to bring peace. We'll learn about the prisoner. The plan almost worked. On the last day, however, trouble started. Of course, their charges were absurd, those charges against Paul, as we shall see. Yet the mob lives on suppose and not fact. Paul had been careful not to cause any unrest in the city, but his efforts had been in vain. He would spend the next five years as a prisoner of Rome. Sometimes our plans and good intentions seem to bring only trouble. But you know what? God is still in control. He used Paul's trials to accomplish his purpose so that his servant got to Rome. Now he can do the same for his people today. So we need to walk Good by faith. Good morning. And with that, let's begin our reading today in the New Testament. Go ahead and share this. We're going into the New Testament. July 2nd, <laughs> Acts chapter 21, verses 18 through 36. The next day, yes. Paul went in with us, Luke and Paul's other companions, to meet with James, and all the elders of the Jerusalem church were present. After greetings were exchanged, Paul gave a detailed account of the things God had accomplished among the Gentiles through his ministry. After hearing this, they praised God. But then they said, You know, dear brother, how many thousands of Jews have also believed. And they all take the law of Moses very seriously. Our Jewish Christians here at Jerusalem have been told that you are teaching all the Jews living in the Gentile world to turn their backs on the law of Moses. They say that you teach people not to circumcise their children or follow other Jewish customs. Now what can be done? For they will certainly hear that you have come. Here's our suggestion. We have four men here who have taken a vow and are preparing to shave their heads. Go with them to the temple, and join them in the purification ceremony, and pay for them to have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that the rumors are all false, and that you yourself observe the Jewish laws. As for the Gentile Christians, all we ask of them is what we already told them in a letter. They should not eat food offered to idols, nor consume blood nor eat meat from strangled animals, and they should stay away from all sexual immorality. So Paul agreed to their request, 
And the next day, he went through the purification ritual with the men and went to the temple. Then he publicly announced the date when their vows would end and sacrifices would be offered for each of them. The seven days were almost ended when some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul in the temple and roused a mob against him. They grabbed him, yelling, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches against our people and tells everybody to disobey the Jewish laws. He speaks against the temple, and he even defiles it by bringing Gentiles in. For earlier that day, they had seen him in the city with Trophimus, a Gentile from Ephesus, and they assumed Paul had taken him into the temple. The whole population of the city was rocked by these accusations, and a great riot followed. Paul was dragged out of the temple, and immediately the gates were closed behind him. As they were trying to kill him, word reached the commander of the Roman regiment that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately called out his soldiers and officers and ran down among the crowd. When the mob saw the commander and the troops coming, they stopped beating Paul. The commander arrested him and ordered him bound with two chains. Then he asked the crowd who he was and what he had done. Some shouted one thing and some another. He couldn't find out the truth in all the uproar and confusion. So he ordered Paul to be taken to the fortress. As they reached the stairs, the mob grew so violent, the soldiers had to lift Paul to their shoulders to protect him. And the crowd followed behind, shouting, Kill him! Kill him! Today we're reading Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. It is only right that the closing song in the Hebrew hymnal be an invitation to praise the Lord. The word praise is used 13 times here. Somebody type Where in praise, praise the Lord for me. Locally praise and universally, the Lord. in the temple and in the vast heavens. In other words, wherever you are, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why should we praise him? Because of what he does and who he is. The better you know God's character and works, the more you will praise him and the more you'll enjoy praising him. How should we praise him? Well, with voices and instruments, including the cymbals, and with our bodies expressing the joy we feel within. The whole person should be one living sacrifice that praises the Lord. Now, who should praise him? Everybody. Well, it says here that everything that has breath praise the Lord, but things that do not have breath, praise him as well. Mm -hmm. So we even have uh, more reason to do so because we're living. Our breath comes from him. So we ought to use it to praise his name. Amen. Breath is the weakest thing we have, but we can devote it to the highest service, mm. praising the Lord. Mm. Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his heavenly dwelling. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of the trumpet. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Sing. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that lives sing praises to the Lord. Everything praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 18, <laughs> verses 9 and 10. A lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. All right, so that's it. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen. So that is it. I am going to share this document in the, oh, here it is, in the comments. Um, don't forget, I will not be live tomorrow. I will not be live tomorrow. I will not be live tomorrow. You all have a wonderful um fourth of july weekend and let's see is that it um i think that's it so anthony is up Zariah's up they're both getting ready for work so i have to get ready to go i finished all my water so don't forget drink your water take your vitamins go for a 30 minute walk and have a great day on purpose 
And y'all, I, I saw these in Walgreens. I kept seeing them all over the internet, these um, apple cider vinegar gummies. And I they taste good, but it's the texture. So I probably made all kind of faces when I was chewing this. <laughs> I was like, oh, I gotta get past the texture of the gummies. Has anyone tried these? They taste pretty good. Um, I usually take the little two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, but yeah, I figured I would try this to see what all the hype is about. The bottle is cute. Red is my favorite color. Um, so that's it. Go ahead and share your takeaway in the comments if you want to. Um, share something that stood out to you or something that you will do differently because of what you heard. And don't forget, you can always go to my website to get your vitamins. And I put these cups on uh, my website too. You're walking for his glory cup. So if you want to get one, they hold 16 ounces of water. And I'm going to make sure I drink a cup every single morning. So that's it. Y'all have a great day. And I will see you all on Monday. On Monday, I will not be live tomorrow. I will not. I know red is my favorite color. You know, whoever created this was just so smart. Does this not? Does this bottle not stand out for real? I said, oh, I look. I wanted it just because I like red. <laughs> All right, you want? Um, yeah. Oh, you. Oh, the cups. Um, someone type in um, shop. KeishaJohnson.com for me and the cups are on there shop KeishaJohnson.com and if you walked for, for 20 minutes while we were listening go ahead and type a number three in the comments but the cups are on my website shop KeishaJohnson.com all right so you all I will see y'all Monday I will not be live tomorrow I will see y'all Monday I will not be live tomorrow I will see you all on Monday all right y'all have a great weekend I will not be live tomorrow Someone's going to message me. Where are you? I will not be live tomorrow. I will not see you all until Monday. So have a great weekend. Bye, y'all. I got to go.